Hello everyone, here's another short tutorial and today we will talk about the diversion fuel calculation. We will start off with uh, having a look at how the fuel requirements are calculated and then I'll also show you how during the flight you will monitor your fuel situation and then once you approach the destination airport and let's say you have to fly holding um, I will show you how to determine the available fuel quantity for holding or when the point comes to either commit to your destination airport or to divert to your alternate. So let's dive straight into the fuel calculation process. Now I use Simbrief uh, for my calculations because I find that Simbrief um, has a very good, very accurate calculation method. Um, so basically um, we have a couple of fuel requirements and the first one you will see normally on your fuel calculation um, page is the trip fuel and so the trip fuel is the fuel required to fly from your departure airport to the destination airport and it must include values like the fuel required for takeoff and climb um, from the airport elevation to the initial cruising level altitude taking into account the expected departure routing. On top of that, you will need the fuel required to fly from top of climb to top of descent, so the cruise phase, including any climb or descents. Um, and additionally, you will need the fuel required from the top of descent to the point where the approach is started, um, taking into account, of course, the standard arrival routing and plus the fuel for the approach and landing at the destination airport. So these values that I just uh, uh, talked about, they all go into the trip fuel value. Now, next up, we have the contingency fuel, and that is actually fuel to cover unexpected deviations from the planned um, conditions. For example, because of um, weather conditions being different, um, for example, not getting your planned cruising level or maybe even have to um, um, go a different routing. Um, that is being covered by the contingency fuel and Simbrief offers you um, different values. Um, I have set mine to 5% from the trip value or a minimum of five minutes because that's what uh, I'm used to in, in real life as well. But you can set different values if you like. You can set 5% or a minimum of 10 minutes, for example, 5% uh, or minimum 15 minutes and so on. Um, these options are available on a SIM brief. So just to clarify, it is the greater of either 5% from the trip fuel value or a minimum of five minutes. Next up is the value for the alternate fuel. And that is the fuel required to fly from the destination airport to the alternate airport. And that includes the fuel for the missed approach. Um, it also includes the fuel for the continuous climb to cruising level or altitude. On top of that, it includes the fuel for cruise uh, from top of climb to top of descent at the long range cruise speed or the econ cruise speed, whatever is selected, um, taking into account obviously the expected routing. Um, on top of that, we have the fuel for the descent, for from the top of descent to the point where the approach is initiated, um, taking obviously into account the expected arrival procedure. And lastly, it also includes the fuel for executing an approach and landing at the alternate airport. Now, if the weather conditions at your destination are such that they are below landing minimum, you will be requiring two alternate airports and then obviously the fuel calculation for the alternate fuel must be sufficient to proceed to the airport or the alternate airport that requires the greater quantity of alternate fuel. Next up, we have the final reserve fuel. And that is a fuel required to fly for 30 minutes at holding speed at 1,500 feet above the airport elevation um, in standard conditions and uh, calculated with the estimated weight on arrival at the destination alternate airport. And lastly, we have the extra fuel. Now, extra fuel is the fuel um, required to cover anticipated deviations. So, for example, um, supply difficulties at the destination airport 
or maybe for fuel cost savings. But also if you have um, thunderstorms forecasted, for example, um, then you are obviously going to take extra fuel because you are anticipating um, some delays because of that. Um, or let's say you're flying to London Heathrow, you know that on average you will fly 15 minutes holding pattern. Um, that is also an anticipated deviation from the norm and hence that would also then um, justify taking on extra fuel. And so adding all these fuel values um, together, um, you get to a planned takeoff fuel value. In this case, it's 5,484 kilograms. Um, on top of that, you will then obviously add your taxi fuel and then you get to your block fuel value. So that was a quick excursion into the world of fuel planning. Um, but now comes the question, how do we deal with our fuel values and the required minimum fuel values during the flight? And so you can see that I wrote down and highlighted two values there. Um, and that is the alternate and the final reserve fuel values, because those are the required minimum fuel values at the missed approach point of your destination airport. So as long as the estimate fuel on board at your destination airport is above the alternate plus final reserve fuel value, um, you are good to continue to your destination airport. Now, before we move on, I know that in some countries, the final reserve fuel is actually 45 minutes um, and not 30 minutes like we have here in Europe. So if we were to approach the destination airport at exactly the missed approach point with the minimum fuel values of alternate plus final reserve fuel, and we would then divert, fly the standard profile um, routing to the alternate airport, we will arrive at the alternate airport with the 30 minutes remaining fuel or 45, depending on the procedures. And to give you a value uh, for the A320, for example, that will be just about around 1200 kilograms, uh, which is not that much really. Coming back to our calculation, uh, we can see that the minimum fuel that you need to have on board for the uh, estimated fuel on board at destination airport is in our case here 2032 kilograms or if you want to round that up that will be 2100 kilograms i.e. 2.1 tons. Now on the operational flight plan uh, depending on what um, layout you choose um, you might find that the remaining fuel at the destination airport will show more than that uh, value I've just mentioned. Um, in this case, for example, it's 2.7 tons. Now that value also includes any contingency fuel and also the extra fuel that you have um, taken on. Enough of the theory. Let's have a look at how it's done practically. So let's have a look at the MCDU. And so we're flying today from Bilbao down to Mallorca and our alternate is Menorca. And the fuel values that we found on the OFP are inserted here into the MCDU. So we've got our 900 kilograms alternate fuel. We've got the final reserve fuel of 1.2 tons. And that then gives us a minimum destination fuel on board required of 2.1 tons. So any fuel above that minimum requirement will be um, counted as extra fuel. In this case, it's uh, 15 minutes. And that's obviously the extra fuel we've taken on plus the contingency fuel. Uh, so here on the estimated fuel on board on the flight plan page, we can see that we have 2.6 tons. And again, 2.6 tons minus the 2.1 tons gives us those 500 kilograms of extra fuel. And so now let's have a look at a fuel check. Uh, we're doing this right above Barcelona. And so we should have 3.2 tons on board. We actually have three tons. And so somewhere along the lines, we have lost 200 kilograms. Um, however, um, the estimated fuel on board for destination is 2.6 tons. And so we are still good uh, to continue 
to our destination airport at this time. So what happens if the estimate fuel on board for our destination actually drops below the required fuel quantity uh, of the 2.1 tons in our case? Um, so the alternate plus final reserve fuel value. Well, then you would have to consider landing somewhere and uh, refuel the aircraft. So do a refueling stop. Um, there is another option, and that would be if you have an airport or a destination airport that is having more than one runway, landing runway, and the weather is uh, such that a diversion uh, due to weather reasons is highly unlikely, you may decide to continue uh, to the destination airport. However, never ever plan to land below the final reserve fuel value. So the final reserve fuel value, those 30 or 45 minutes, depending on the country, are rock bottom. Needless to say that, of course, before even getting to this point, you will have done everything possible to save fuel um, in order to not get into this corner. Okay, we're in the approach towards Palma de Mallorca, runway 06 left for landing, and we've just heard that we have to fly a holding pattern overhead the Alpha Delta X-ray beacon. Now, in the back of our mind, we know that we have a little bit extra fuel available. So it was about 15 minutes uh, flight time. However, the question now is, how much of that fuel is available to fly holding patterns? Because we only know at this point that at the destination airport runway, we have to have 2.1 tons in our tanks um, in order to fly a missed approach and divert um, to the alternate airport. Anything below 2.1 tons means that we will arrive at the alternate airport with less than final reserve fuel. And whenever you foresee a landing with less than final reserve fuel, you would be required to declare a fuel emergency. So, simply speaking, we now have to work out how much fuel we require from that holding pattern to the destination runway. And there is, as often, a rule of thumb for that. And so we know that the standard fuel flow for an A319, A320 is around about 2.4 tons per hour, and that equals to 40 kilograms per minute. So if we assume a ground speed of around about 250 knots, which equals around four miles per minute, um, we can then say that for every 10 miles of ground distance from the holding to the destination runway requires about 100 kilograms of fuel. And that calculation method is um, very generous uh, with regard to the uh, fuel requirements and uh, works quite nicely. And so that gives you a fairly good estimation um, when you look at the uh, fuel on board when you enter uh, the holding pattern, uh, because then you know at what point you would have to leave the holding pattern in order to fly the approach and still have your minimum fuel requirements. And so looking at the approach chart here, we can estimate that from Alpha Delta X-ray on the standard arrival um, approach path, uh, we will be requiring around about 20 track miles, and that would then equal to 200 kilograms. And so we add the 200 kilograms to the 2.1 um, fuel value, i.e. alternate plus final reserve fuel, uh, we have 2.3 tons. And so that's the value at which we have to leave the holding pattern. And so when entering the holding pattern, we would have a look at the fuel gauges. And we can see we have around about 2.6 tons in our tanks. And that leaves us with 300 kilograms of holding fuel. And looking at the fuel flow right now, um, that equates to around about um, 8 to 10 minutes. And now normally the air traffic controller would have given you an expected approach time. And so that's a value you can uh, then work with. And you can also then uh, make a decision on whether or not you are going to commit yourself to the destination airport. And by that, I mean that you are going to use your alternate fuel um, for the holding um, in order to stay at the destination airport. 
Now, we are aware of the fact that once you commit yourself, um, you would not be able to land anywhere else. And so that has to be a well thought out process. Um, but again, the lower limit is the final reserve fuel value. So even if you commit yourself to the destination airport, uh, do not land below the 30 minute final reserve value. And so that would be in our case 1.2 uh, for the final reserve value plus the 200 kilograms of the track fuel required uh, from the holding to the runway, i.e. 1.4 tons would be the absolute latest where you would um, leave the holding pattern. And of course, you would advise ATC uh, well ahead of time uh, to make sure they understand that um, you're not declaring an emergency, but that you have not the fuel uh, for any more um, delays. But again, that is kind of last resort. If you have uh, any uncertainty about your destination airport, um, the safer way uh, to go would be to divert um, in a timely fashion. And um, that is a th process um, that pilots go through uh, when they fly holding patterns. And it can be quite complicated sometimes, um, depending on the situation, it can be very dynamic, um, especially with, for example, thunderstorms around the destination airport. Um, but yes, that's the process. So we're lucky today, we're just uh, receiving the approach clearance. And so we are now going to exit the holding and fly the approach. And one thing I just want to demonstrate to you is um, with the rule of thumb that we've just used to work out the fuel from the holding to the uh, touchdown. Um, let's have a look how it actually works out here in the simulator. So here we are exiting the holding at 2.4 tons. So we can see the airport in the distance there. We're doing the standard approach. And of course, if you have any reason to believe that you're going to have, you know, uh, more track miles than compared to the standard approach, you would also insert that into your calculations. So I'm just going to turn final any moment now. And then we'll intercept the ILS. Here we are, intercepting the glide slope now. So we'll continue our approach. Very soft touchdown. Very nice, happy with that one. So we've got spoilers, reverse green and diesel. And looking at the fuel quantity, we have 2,260 kilograms. Uh, we left the holding at 2,440 kilograms. And so we've used, well, 200 kilograms of fuel, exactly as we have worked out with our rule of thumb. Okay, that's the end of the video. I hope I have clarified a few things for you here regarding fuel planning. Um, I'll do another video very shortly uh, and it will be released in the next couple of days regarding the practical side of actually performing a diversion. And so until then, 
Stay tuned, enjoy flying, and as always, I wish you all happy landings.